Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I am so thrilled that you're here with me today. I have a very special guest, and I know, I know, I know that I say all my guests are very special, but Susan Gabriel is a former client of mine, and she's going to share with you today what it was like to work with me and five things that I taught her that really impacted her business. And I think you're going to not only find that interesting and helpful and useful information, but she's also going to tell us about her journey to become a book publisher. And Susan is a Christian author herself. She's a book publisher, and she is a woman that has literally the heart of God. She's a woman of service and she cares so deeply about other people that she's like an angel. So as you listen today, I think you're going to get the same impression, but I'm super excited to have her here with me today. And I can't wait to share her and her brilliance with all of you. So without further ado, Susan Gabriel, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, that was quite an introduction. <laughs> I hope I can live up to it. <laughs> you will, Susan. You are just a ray of light. I adore you. And I am so honored that you chose me to help you grow your business and to teach you all the things that I got to teach you because it was amazing to watch you grow as an individual, to watch your team grow, and to watch your business grow. And I know that even since our contract ended, you have had some really super great success. And I, I just am so, so happy for you. I think when we're called to, you know, follow God's purpose for us, it's amazing what happens. And you are a prime example of that. But before we dive into working together, I would love for you to just tell the listeners how you got to this point in your journey. Uh, it's been a long time getting here. <laughs> I, uh, I had a very significantly uh, traumatic experience uh, in the 1980s, long time ago, but um, I thought that perhaps I would write about it. I Back then, I started writing about it. I thought maybe it might be helpful for other people um, to hear about my experience and how how God brought me through it. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. I just started it and then I got to the painful part of it, which was the traumatic part, and I couldn't write anymore. So I just put it in a box and put it away. Um, and in the meantime, I've had jobs uh, for the past 35 years as um, a writer and an editor and a project manager. Um, so interestingly enough, all of those skills work really well in a publishing company because <laughs> that's pretty much what I do now. But uh, I, I met someone online who was from Nigeria who was very interested in hearing about my life. And I happened to just start telling him about this experience that I'd had back in the 80s. So he was so interested in it. And I kept writing more about it and writing more. And he kept urging me to write a book about it. And I said, well, I did. I mean, I started one. He said, well, you should finish it. And so he dared me. Uh, that I would not be able to finish it. <laughs> so you don't want to do that with me. <laughs> I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> and so amazingly enough, about the same time that happened, I was working on cleaning out some boxes in the garage, and I happened to run across all of the manuscript and paperwork from this this incident. It was uh, there was a lot of paperwork from the courts, from psychologists, from uh, from the legal system. Um, so I ran across this box that had everything in it. And I thought that I had long since thrown it out because we'd moved several times. And that box, uh, I, apparently I kept moving it with us. And I don't remember doing that. But it was like God just illuminated that box. And I was jumping, throwing things out without even looking at it. But that one I opened up and looked at saw what was in it, brought it in the house, put it in, in uh, my office and thought, well, maybe, maybe I will go ahead and finish the book. So that was really how I got started in going back 30 years later <laughs> and, and working on this book uh, as a memoir. Um, it was again, somewhat traumatic to write about. And in fact, I wrote the book and published the book three different times because each time I wrote it, I thought, 
no, I, that's not exactly what I want to say when I realized after I'd published it. So I went back and rewrote it and then published it again and then went back and rewrote it, published it again. So three times. I'm happy with the last version, the most recent version. In fact, it's up on my bookcase there called Wheels of Injustice, Saving My Child from the Child Savers. So that was that's the background, really, of, of where it all started. Uh, in publishing my book three times, I really learned a lot. And I published it in every format possible. I, I used an audio book. Um, I published in soft ebook, you know, which is soft as paperback, um, hard, hardcover. And I also did large print. So I learned through all of those. And then I also published it on all the different platforms, like not only Amazon, but also Ingram Spark and Draft to Digital and Lulu. There are several other places besides Amazon. I found, uh, and those are really good places to publish a book because uh, now if you Google my book title, Wheels of Injustice, and if you Google the whole title, you're going to come up with at least five or six pages of references to my book in places that it's being sold. I mean, it's being sold in very bizarre places that I've never heard of before, even in geography class. So, so it's been picked up and sold in many, many different locations. So through that, I realized that I have really had a lot of knowledge about publishing. And I started thinking I would really like to share it with other people and, and help them publish their books. So that was when I decided uh, to become a publisher. And the original friend, the one from Nigeria, and I uh, came up with a name, Soul Sunshine. Um, so that's where that came from. He's a Christian also. And uh, we we talked about how we wanted the, the company to be set up, what we wanted to do with it. Um, and uh, we have been working on that ever since. Since that time, um, my second decision to write another book was for writing a book of poetry so i decided it would be really cool <laughs> i god has been leading me this whole way as you'll see but i decided it would be really cool to have a different artist illustrate each one of my different poems so i put out a a one post on facebook asking for artists who might be interested in illustrating a poem and I am still getting responses from that post. And that was about a year ago. That's amazing. <laughs> and I, yeah, but I, so I decided this, I was getting so many, I thought, how, how do I organize this? So I created a Google form and I had sent it off, had everybody fill out the Google form, giving me information about themselves, about their illustration style, uh, just a lot of things like that. And then I created the back end of it so when they completed the form, it would dump into a spreadsheet. So, so now, whenever I want to go and see if any additional artists have signed up, I just go to my spreadsheet. And I now have 150. That's 150 amazing. Artists. And yes, that's the project manager in you, right? Yes. To, to come up with an idea, create the form, and then have a system mm -hmm. in place, a process in place for collecting all this data. And now you actually have a lot of these illustrators that work mm -hmm. directly with your team. So I want to, I, I, we're not going to dive into Susan's traumatic story. I will tell you that yeah. it involved um, an accusation and they ended up taking her child away from her and the accusation was false. And it was this very traumatic, drawn out, negative, horrible experience. And Susan very gracefully shares that in her book. So I encourage you to read it, especially if you are going through anything um, traumatic or, or, um, anything related to your children or anything like that, because I think you'll find it inspiring because her journey is definitely one of resilience and perseverance and her, she, it talks about in the book, how God's hand was always with her and guided her even in those moments of despair when she wanted to give up. So I encourage you to pick up wheels of, uh, say it, the title again, Susan wheels of injustice, saving my child from the child savers.
Yeah. And like Susan said, you can buy that just about anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I want to point out that through Susan's journey, she has connected with a team of people around the world and she's giving opportunities to our artists, illustrators, writers, like all of these people that would not have otherwise had this opportunity to be published and really grow themselves. And so if you are a person who wants to write a book or who wants to or needs an illustrator or an artist for your book, Susan is the go-to. She has got a bank of team members and people that she has built relationships with. So she can really decipher who is the best fit. And she's having incredible success with marrying people, authors, writers, poets, and illustrators and artists for their books and then helping them publish them. So if you're looking for anybody with that skill set, Susan is definitely your go-to. And the other thing I want to say is that I interviewed Danielle Mendoza. Hmm, gosh, I can't remember exactly when that episode aired, but I'll put that episode in the show notes because she is not a book coach or a publisher, but she will help you take your idea and create the format for writing your book. So two different roles and, and responsibilities and businesses per se, but both will guide you. So I think if you're listening to this and you want further information on writing a book, talking to Susan, talking to Danielle would be a great avenue to get you started. Okay, so Susan, we're going to dive into your five things that you felt I really helped you with in your business. Okay, first thing, I want to mention how I found you because that was very, very interesting. Um, I was in the process of going on podcasts and I was looking through different podcasts to see which ones I could pitch to, uh, to be on interviewed on their shows. I found one that sounded really interesting and I decided to um, listen to one of the episodes uh, to see if, you know, how it went and if it looked like something I wanted to wanted to be involved with. So it happened to be your episode. You were being interviewed. And I was only going to listen to a little bit of it just to get the flavor for it. I ended up listening to the entire uh, podcast all the way to the end. And when I got done, I thought, I'm going to contact that lady. I really like what she said. And you were talking about building a brand. And that was something I had never thought about before. But you talked about it uh, being so important. You talked about some various ways to help people begin to see your brand as as, as being part of your business and uh, how important that was that it be consistent. And um, so I contacted you and we had one meeting and I, I said, OK, sign me up. And you thought that was easy, but I mean, part of that reason for that was because I heard your podcast first. So that was the, the first thing I was looking for. And that was something you definitely helped me with. Um, you helped me you come up with a good color scheme, uh, come up with um, good fonts. And, and not only that, you made sure that I realized how important it was that I actually am the face of the business. No matter who is on my team, I'm the face of it and people need to feel that they can trust me. So how do I project that trust out in the world as so that people realize that I'm here to help them. I'm not going to rip them off. Um, you know, I'm a strong believer in God. Uh, in fact, when we first started our company, we said we were going to put God at the head of the company. Uh, God has brought us clients. I mean, there, there's no doubt about it because, and God has brought my teammates. Um, they've all come about in such a miraculous way and, or an unusual way that I, it, you, could, you could see God's fingerprints all over it. So the brand, though, was an interesting part that um, I had never thought of before and that you brought my attention to that. So I had a lot of fun looking at different color schemes on Pinterest and picking a, a few that I liked and uh, and that was that was great. So that was that's number one, I would say it was helping me build a brand. 
which I want to emphasize um, this to the listeners because we talk so much about personal branding on the show. Because in order to market your business, you have to differentiate yourself, right? Your mm-hmm. your personal brand is that perception that other people have of you, and your marketing becomes how you communicate that, how you differentiate yourself, how you make your uniqueness known to the rest of the world, and. So when Susan and I first started, she didn't have a personal brand and she wasn't front and center in her business. And that was the key. And then the other thing we wanted to do was really, and I am not a um, like graphic designer or any of that, but what I, what I can do is help my clients. Like what Susan said is when we're looking, thinking of the overall marketing of our business, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing and we want it to resonate with our audience and connect with them on an emotional level. Well, colors have psychology to them. And so the exercise Susan's talking about, I've talked about this in a previous episode before, but you can go on Pinterest if your color, if you're questioning your color scheme and, or you don't feel like it is just right with you and you can create a private board. And if you want, just email me and I can send you a video on this. But anyway, you can create a private Mm -hmm. board. You can go on and just choose color palettes that you like and see what resonates with you. And then look up the meanings. If it resonates with you, it should resonate with your soulmate client. And so that's what we did. We kind of fine tuned Susan's look of her business as well as put her front and center. Right. Okay, Susan. And you'll <laughs> notice the color I'm wearing. Yes. It's one of my brand colors. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And it's in and, and green is such a um it's a it's a color of it, and it's not green green, it's more of a, a tealish green, green, but it's a yeah, mm-hmm. it's um it's beautiful and it's it's a it's a a color of growth and and money as well as trust. So it's the perfect yeah. color for everything that Susan's doing to help her clients publish their their books and resonate with that just overall growth that publishing a book offers. Yeah, and uh, so the colors I, I'm very happy with the colors that we came up with. Um, the other one is yellow because uh, soul sunshine. Just when you hear that, you think of yellow because of you know the word sunshine but sunshine in my business is spelled s-o-n-s-h-i-n-e for the son of god but we still use sunflowers as one of the images uh, on our website and in various um, other kinds of ads we use sunflowers so um and which goes really well with this nice green (laughs) it does it's beautiful okay so number two okay next one was building the foundation which i I would I needed badly because it's just starting in the business. Um, I didn't really understand what was needed as the ground floor uh, so that I could build on that and move forward. So you taught me uh, things like standard operating procedures, what I needed to do there. You had me write up a a business plan uh, with a lot of details like my ideal client. Um, You had me prepare for the kinds of things that I would need to know to continue on in the business and be successful. So that foundation and then training uh, my staff, the people that are on my team to handle some of the things that come along was helping to eventually free me up uh, from not being, I don't have to do everything now. Um, I've got people, I've got people. So, and it's funny but, because you had people before, mm-hmm. but you didn't have those people doing the things that they could do. And I want to emphasize right. how important this is, you guys. And we've had episodes before about, you know, how to hire a VA and I'll link that in the show notes. But Susan has an entire team of a website mm-hmm. designer, writers, illustrators, artists, like all of these people, but she wasn't utilizing them to take the weight off of her. And there's a statistic where s- someone else, it there's it's the 70% rule. And I can't remember who came up with this rule, but some genius person um, said 70, if someone can do something 70% as good as you can do it, then you should give it to them to do. Mm-hmm. And what that does is it free you, frees you up to do the things that are revenue generating. Like Susan can generate phenomenal content that is going to direct people to her. But more importantly, she can be out there marketing her business with her face and, you know, telling people about her business, but doing those important discovery calls, sales calls, the things that are going to bring in clients and 
the other things she can she can really implement her visions and she can sit and be the visionary for the future of her business and that's what creating that foundation does it gives you that ability to have systems and processes in place so that if you do have a new hire you can just hand them the process and say, mm-hmm. here's what you're going to be doing. Here's your job description. And I remember we even worked on that. Like which of your team yes. members are going to be doing this versus this versus this. And it's so wonderful to hear you say that now things are like flowing mm-hmm. and working and, and doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. It's really made a difference because, because that way I can pick and choose what I think is important and I want to do. Uh, for example, I think it's really important for me to uh, interface with the client uh, and make sure that if there's, for example, illustrations are really big in our, our publishing company, uh, making sure that the client is happy with the illustrations, that the illustrator understands what the client wants. So, you know, I feel like my job, a really important part of it is keeping the client happy. Mm-hmm. And so I do a lot of, of client and customer interaction. Um, and I think that's been really successful because just about every book that we are publishing or have published, um, the author wants to write another book and have us publish it. So we're getting follow on business, which I didn't really think about. You know, at first I thought book, a book was just a one off, but you know, they, they are inspired by uh, having the one book done. They want to keep going and mm-hmm. they find that working with uh, me and with my team is so easy and pleasant and fun that they want to want to keep going. They don't want it to end. And so. this is key, right, Susan? Mm-hmm. Or when you build that solid foundation first, you have more customer satisfaction. So you mm-hmm. have customer retention. They're not going to go and search for another book publisher. They're going to stay with you because you've made the mm-hmm. process easy right. and pleasant. And that opens the door for roofs for referral sources. So again, you you're having that opportunity to continue to grow, which Obviously, if you're starting a business, that's what you want to do. You don't want to be in that 45% that fails in five years. You want to grow and succeed and leave a legacy. And I know that was very important for you, Susan. So as it should be for everybody who's listening. Yes, yes, it really was. Now, the next one that you helped me with was to break tasks down into manageable steps. So, you know, because when you you look at something, it, like coming up what something we just recently did i'll use that as an example we decided that because so many authors as soon as their book is published they're kind of left it's sort of like the prom date that just dumps you at the door and that's it and <laughs> no follow up uh, that what happens is publishing companies or people even who self publish find that they don't know where to go for marketing. And without it marketing, you're not gonna get any book sales. So one thing we decided to do is to offer free marketing, which is just about unheard of, even with traditional publishers. Um, And certainly not with the vanity presses, they charge you for everything. But what we decided is we were gonna offer it for free. So I have one of my most reliable um, team members uh, working on a package deal, a package of things that we are offering to our authors. And we're just getting started with this. We've got the package put together. Uh, it's going to include their own landing page, um, their own book trailer, um, uh, instructions on you know, how to get interviews from podcasts, uh, all kinds of ideas on ways to market their book, um, and uh, some ads that they can use in various places of uh, some promo sites, what the best ones are, how much they cost, how to use promo sites to stack your books so that you get book sales, a lot of, of, a lot of them all at once, how to get book reviews. There's so much, there's so many different aspects to what needs to be done after a book is published. Um, and we've collected all that information and we wanna give it to our authors. We might sell it to other people, but if you're one of our authors, you're going to get it. So, so that's the way what we wanted to do, just because we want to stand out from from the crowd. We don't want to be like any other publishing company. And so far, uh, I haven't seen a publishing company that does everything that we do. And for example, we let the author keep the copyright. 
Uh, we don't keep that. Um, we let the author keep all of the royalties. We don't take any cuts from that. Um, we, we earn money when we do the same kinds of things that someone would do when they're self-publishing. They would have to hire an illustrator or an editor or someone to format their book, all of those things. So instead of people having to go different places and find an, an illustrator and an editor and spend time wasting time looking and maybe, you know, finding someone who doesn't pan out, um, you know, they could come to us and we'll take care of all of that mm -hmm. and make it easy. So, and they, and we won't charge them any more than they would have been paying if they'd gone to freelancers. Mm -hmm. So and I think, Susan, I want to emphasize too, because I've published a book and I used a, a hybrid publisher. So mm -hmm. not to say anything negative about my experience, but I think what you offer that is really, really key is that you have systems and processes in place. You have a team. So if something were to happen mm -hmm. to you and you weren't able to work, you have other people to step in and make sure those projects are followed through mm -hmm. and completed and, and published effectively. Yes. And I think that's really, really important for anyone who is thinking about publishing a book and thinking about hiring someone to help them. That is de definitely something that differentiates Susan from others out there in the marketplace. Yes. It's the definitely. sense of, it's the sense of caring and the sense of um, wanting to see something to completion, but to completion in a way that lends to overarching success long term not just mm -hmm. let's get this book on a shelf yes yes we want our our clients to be successful i mean that's the whole that's the whole purpose mm -hmm. and to just publish the book isn't enough um yeah you know it needs we need to go further they all all the publishing companies should go further but they're not so that's why we're different <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i love that okay what are we at number four Okay, yeah, uh, another one is, uh, oh, you were super helpful, helpful in reviewing my materials. You know, the, the newsletters that I wrote, blog posts that I wrote, our website copy, we changed it all up based on your recommendations. Um, it's way, way better now. Um, business strategies, uh, how to talk about my business to prospective clients. Those, all those things that I really didn't, know quite how to do them. Um, you pointed out things that I said maybe that wasn't, I could have said better or um, like the website. I mean that we just completely changed the website um, in, in so many ways. And uh, it's, it's so much, so much better. Uh, so that was super helpful. Uh, you know, to have somebody come in and actually get in to what you're working on and review it and give you feedback is is amazing because most most people like coaches will just give you general information about this is generally speaking this is how you should write a blog post but you actually gave me specific feedback that was great you also yeah. gave me specific training on how to do seo and how to include that in the blog post and in the website and that was remarkable because I really did not know how to do that. I knew what it was. I didn't know how to how to increase it. I didn't know how to improve it. I didn't know what was being um, considered by the search engines uh, when you have a website or you put anything out there on um, on social media. But I learned so much, and uh, I'm so glad that the sessions are recorded because. I go back and listen again because it, there's so much in each session that, you know, I, I can't quite get all of it the first time around. Yeah, yeah, there there is yeah. a lot. And I'm, I'm glad you said that. And Susan, you know, I'm glad that you appreciated that because that's something I, and I don't want to say the word pride, like that I pride myself on this, but it's something that I personally really cherish within my coaching program is that mm -hmm. I'm hands-on. I don't yes. leave you to do anything on your own and I'll make sure that I review every single thing you send me. Now it may take me 48 hours, but I get it done and I get it back to you so that it can be better because at the end of the day, I, I feel like I'm part of your team and mm -hmm. I want you to succeed. That is my whole intention. And especially, you know, when you, when people come to me and they have this, this 
this, this calling on their heart, this purpose on their heart, and I can see God working in them, I am going to be on fire to make sure that happens. So I'm glad that you appreciated that because I really do, um, take pride in that. I love doing that. Like that's, that's something that I cherish within my business. Yeah. And it, it was, you were actually very fast with your turnaround. <laughs> I, that's that type A in me, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess it is that. And, um, and the T probably in your, the T. Oh in, yeah. 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 The T and the J in your personality type. Yeah. So Susan, Susan's uh -huh. big into the Myers-Briggs personality type. So, uh, we were, we worked really well together because of our personal mm -hmm. personality types, but she called me out on my personality type immediately. And I was like, oh my gosh, she really gets this. Yeah. That, <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah. 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 We referred to that a lot over our six months together. Yeah. And that was really fun. And you and I are alike, except for the T and the F. Yeah. But I yeah. needed a T in my life. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for being my tea. Um, you know, the last one is more of like a personal thing, uh, addressing uh, mindset blocks and um, anxiety or nervousness or, you know, being like, for example, getting ready for this podcast. Um, yeah, yeah, I've done several more podcasts since uh, I, you and I first met um, and I am way more calm about them <laughs> than I was at first. I, I'm more relaxed and mm -hmm. I can get out, you know, because my mind is what it does is I will have a million different thoughts going through it at the same time. And I have to be quick enough to pick out the thought as it's whizzing by my brain and put it out into words and make it comprehensible. So that takes a little bit of time. So sometimes I'm a little slow, <laughs> slow, slow speaking, you know, maybe I may hesitate at first before answering a question. Um, I may pause and, and try to uh, think of a word, the right word. So that makes me more nervous knowing that I do that. Mm -hmm. Part of my personality type too. But knowing that I do that tends to make me more nervous then I realized that's not a big deal. A lot of people do that. That's not something to, to fret about. And in fact, if I speak a little more slowly and carefully, maybe that's a good thing because people are more likely to understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. you know, that's, that's the thing. The key is not, not um, obsessing over what you can't do or you that maybe you think you don't do well and turn it around and think about how what it actually might be as a benefit mm -hmm. instead of a disadvantage yeah yeah so yeah and we that's... did we worked on that i remember at one point you were exhausted and you were starting mm -hmm. to get to that point of burnout and that's when we yeah. really dissected the job descriptions the standard operating procedures and who could take what off your plate and right. I remember, I remember that day vividly because I was like, oh shoot. But the second we did all that, you uh -huh. were so much better when we started breaking down those tasks mm -hmm. and assigning yes. them and, and doing like just making some of those. So, and, and I like to say, you know, sometimes it's the littlest shift that gets the biggest results. And, mm -hmm. and it really was something that, yeah, you had to spend time doing it, but it was simple once it was done. Like once, you know, it was like a simple thing that you could adjust, do, and then move forward with more ease, simplicity, ease, and grace, I should say. Right. Um, the other thing I want to say is what Susan said about the podcast interviews too, is I actually listened to some of her interviews that she had done. And so then we could look, we could actually talk about, okay, when you go on a show, talk more about this versus this, yes, emphasize that, but talk about it this way kind of thing. And so I think that gave you more confidence going into, and I, cause I remember we did this before, like you had a, it was a big interview. It was like a popular mm -hmm. podcast you were going on and yeah. you were nervous about it. And so we broke that down, how you could really talk about your business in a way that was going to be effective and really resonate with the listeners. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I, I remember that conversation, uh, vividly as well, but the other thing I want to emphasize too, is when you get those recordings, like it's powerful because we talk about so many things because my brain's like Susan, Susan, it is so 
flooded. <laughs> and there are so many ideas. The idea generation just comes and comes and comes and comes. And it comes with that being strategic, but then being creative. And so you get all of that information in those coaching sessions. So you almost have to go back and listen again, mm -hmm. because you want to implement everything. And I think that's a huge bonus that you get those um, recordings, because like you said, even if it's six months later, you can say, Oh, Robin, and I talked about that. I'm going to go back and listen and see exactly what it was she said and how I should say that or implement that or, or whatever. So um, I'm glad you brought those, those things up because yeah. I think the the overarching theme in all of this is that strategy component and and mm -hmm. starting with the foundation and then taking it one step at a time and it's just like publishing a book when you think about it you yeah. don't publish a book when you've written one chapter you don't publish a book when you've written the first draft most of the time our first drafts are junk we have to go through and have someone else's eyes on them and edit them and and then edit them ourselves so it's a process and it's the same thing with building your foundation you don't just grow to six figures overnight you have to build the foundation have the systems and processes in place use seo to drive traffic to your website so that people can find you from anywhere at any time and mm -hmm. That's the one thing we talked during our time together. We talked a teeny tiny bit about social media, but most of our time mm -hmm. and effort was on SEO and right. really beefing up the website to make sure that people could find you that way. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, huge bonus. Yeah. Okay, Susan, yeah. I am so yeah. grateful you were here. I have one last question for you. I First, first, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so generous with sharing your experience of working with me because I immensely enjoyed working with you. I was so sad when our contract was ending, yeah. but um, I would love for you to tell the listeners just how has your faith influenced your journey as a business owner? My faith, <clears throat> sorry, my faith has been the primary driver in everything I do. Um, I wake up every day and ask God, what am I supposed to do today? And my day is directed by God because there are times I, in my mind, I will make a list of here's all the things that I need to do today. They get up and I get started and I do none of them because God had a different list. And I find that his list is actually a lot more interesting than my list was. And sometimes there are things that happen. And I'll give you one quick example that only God could have arranged. And it's amazing. Like I was contacted by someone who was interested in getting their children's book published. He had written and illustrated a book. Um, so I sent him, we have a form also for authors that we send them so that uh, we can get to know them and get a little more information about what they want. I sent him the form. And when I got the form back, I was <clears throat> absolutely shocked because one of the questions that I had asked, which was not supposed to be on the form, I sent him the wrong one. But the question was, uh, what, um, what is the worst experience you've ever gone through? Um, and what is your relationship with God? And uh, there's one other question, but it was intended for people who were writing memoirs who were Christians. So I accidentally sent him that form, but he filled it out, sent it back. And he said the worst time of his life was right now right this minute. He was living in his car. It was January. Um, he had just had a breakup in his marriage and had just lost his job, had nothing. He was just, I mean, he was really at the end and at the bottom and he had never felt so low. So uh, apparently God wanted me to find him <laughs> and for us to meet. And um, he, uh, I decided to uh, work with him brought him in and worked on publishing his book. I said, I know you don't have any money. I'm just going to do it for you because you need this. And I want you to have a published book. And because it's a, it was a really cute story. And on top of that, it was a story that I that resonated with me that made it me realize that God had sent him. And I uh, published his book. I brought him on. Uh, he had background in sales and marketing. So I brought him on as a team member. Um, he's been, he's risen to the top of my team. He's now one of my most productive team members. In fact, he's the person that if I am going to be gone, I can turn the business over to him and he'll keep it going. 
Um, if there's a conversation, I would rather have him have with a client than me. I have him do it. He does a really good job with that. So, you know, he, I, I'm amazed at what's happened and how God put him in my life. But this is the kind of thing that has happened and continues to happen. Uh, and I, and I know it's because we are all my, my team and I are all looking to God to give us direction. Mm -hmm. And, um, and by the way, the, this person that was living in his car was not a Christian at the time. And, um, he later became a Christian and I said, well, what was the turning point? And he said, you, he meaning me. And so I was like, uh, so humbled by that because I had no idea that I had that kind of influence on him and on what he was going through at that time. Um, I really just wanted to help him get his book published and then see if there was anything else that possibly I could do. But he's been, like I said, a very, very unique person and very completely changed from when I first met him. Um, very responsible. Um, you know, he's come up with his marketing plan. He's the person I put in charge of the marketing plan for our authors, the one that we want to give away for free. The, he's the one that came up with all of these different elements that are in this package that we're giving to authors. And uh, he worked so hard on it. I mean, it, I knew he was working late into the evenings, um, but it, it, he's been a wonderful turnaround story and a wonderful example of what can happen when you let God uh, lead your life and mm -hmm. you continue to have faith that whatever comes along is something that God has put in your path and wants you to uh, to handle in one way or another. You know, mm -hmm. it's something that God wants you to do. And uh, so that's my faith. My faith is believing that every day God is guiding my steps and that he is leading me in the right direction and will continue to. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we have problems just like everybody. Absolutely, um, absolutely. <laughs> and I think it's, it's so the, when you were talking, the thing that just kept popping into my head was Jesus Take the Wheel, that song by Carrie Underwood. <laughs> yes. It, it's so true. When we put him at the helm of our business, things just go better. I'm like you, I make a to-do list every day, but inevitably there are things on that to-do list that don't get done, but something else is accomplished that was so much more powerful because he always knows best. Yes. Always knows best. Yes. So yeah. yeah Susan, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. This was a delight to see you again and uh -huh. wonderful to talk to you. And it's so great to hear how good things are going for you and your business. And I just thank you for shining your light um, to all of my listeners. So thank you so much. Thank you. I so much appreciate getting to work with you. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom um, and all of the help that you gave me. So uh, if anybody's looking for a coach, I highly <laughs> recommend Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susan. How can the listeners connect with you? Um, my, my website is Soul Sunshine, S-O-U-L-S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E. That's soulsunshine.com. Um, that's probably the easiest way. I have a uh, they can send it to my email. A really quick and easy email to remember for me is books at soulsunshine.com. That's awesome. Uh, so that, that's, those are probably the easiest ways. I mean, social media, who knows? You can get turned completely, your account can get shut off in a heartbeat on Facebook. So I don't worry <laughs> too much about those, those ways to get in touch. I, prefer, I taught you well. <laughs> yes, I prefer something simple. <laughs> yeah, me too. So that's perfect. I will put both of those links in the show notes. So listeners, if you want to contact Susan, you can easily do so. Thanks again, Susan. It was an honor to have you here. You're a joy, you're a light, and mm, I thank God for you. So thank you. Thank you.